Hello everybody. Before I get into this video, I'd like to give props to Players Prog because he has all the scripts. I'm just modifying them to be more like my own and to look more like Pet Simulator. So let's get right into the tutorial. Okay, so I'll be showing you guys the setup of these. So before you guys get overwhelmed with anything I already have, these are the pets I will be using. This is a walking pet and this is a flying pet. And I will get into those in a second about how all of that works of how to set up those. But first what we need is a folder for our pets. So in Workspace, create a new folder called Player Pets. Like that. And then in here, there will be multiple folders with everybody in the game, right? So that's how that will work. And then what we need is a server, um, is just a regular script and server script service and a client script and starter player scripts. Now you can rename these however you want, but the regular script I have is pet server and the client one I have is pet client. So let's get into how those work and I'll be showing you guys the scripts. Okay guys, so in the server script, um, here's all of the code you need in the server script. Um, I'm not just gonna be showing you the code and then just leaving it. I will be explaining it as well. So I'm gonna blow this up a little bit. And I'm gonna explain it. So first we're getting the player service, so all the players in the game, and then we are getting the folder we just created in workspace. Game.workspace.playerpets. We are we are getting that folder. Here we have a function um, that runs when the player is added, and basically what it's doing is it makes a new folder inside of the player pets folder and it renames it to your player's name. So when I would join the game, it would make a new folder and the name of the folder would be my name, which is Stewie Fing. And so it would be like that for everybody else's name that joins and whatnot. So that's how that works. And then we have a function uh, for when the player leaves. So basically, um, we're getting the player's folder, right? So we want to destroy the player's folder when they leave the, when we leave the game. So we are getting the folder. And if the if something went wrong with the folder, then we're just gonna stop wrong with, then we're just gonna stop the function. So if something went wrong with the folder or anything like that, then we're just gonna pause it. But if uh, nothing went wrong, then we're gonna destroy uh, the folder. And then down here, it's going through every player in the game. So that's what this means for underscore comma player in players get children do. That's just getting every player, and we're running a new thread and uh, running the player added function. Then down here. That uh, th that makes those work for for anybody else that joins. So that is the server script explained. And once again, here is the whole script uh, for the server. So let's get on to the client. Okay, guys. So the client script script is bigger than the like quite a bit bigger, um, but it's not too bad. About 50 lines. So first, um, I'm getting variables. Sorry, I just do this thing with like I. This is my organizing method of like defining stuff. I put you know, the two commas, brackets, and whatnot. But you can do that if you want. But I am getting the player service again. I'm getting run service, and I'm getting the player pets folder uh, in, in workspace. All right, and then we have the utils, which um, we're just getting a circle, which is pi times two, that's a full circle. And then the minimum radius as four. So utilities, you know, something that we can change or whatnot, you know. And then we're getting to a function called position pets. This is basically the how everything works in the pet, of how it positions it in everything. So I'm gonna let you guys look at it. It's bringing in a character, which is your player's character and your player's folder. And so it's looping through every pet in the folder. And if there's not a pet, they're gonna stop the function. And then I don't really wanna go through everything, but this is positioning the pets based off of the amount of pets in the folder, the angle, just everything like that. So I'm just going to let you guys look at it. So I'll get you guys, I'll let you, uh, you guys get everything. I'm going to zoom over, zoom over a little bit and look at the comments. So there you go. If we keep scrolling down, it's checking uh, if the 
player is walking, and if it is, then we're checking if the p pet is a flying pet. And if it's not, then we're going to make the uh, pet walk. And then down here, if the pet is a flying pet, then we'll make it fly. And I'll get into that more in a second of how that works. Alright, and then when we settled all these values up here and whatnot, then we finally pivot the pet, which means just position it. And we have to do that because the pet is a model, and that's just how that works. And then when we get down here, run service, this basically makes it so the pet is always listening and always is following the character. So we're going through every pet folder in the player pets folder, and we are getting the name, and we're getting the character and everything like that, and just checking if all that is all good. And then we're positioning the pets with the character in the pet folder. So, I'm going to go through the script again. Like, I mean, I'm just going to show you guys slowly. So, we have variables, we have utilities. So, we have the utilities, and then we have the position pet script. So, I'm going to go through that quick. And then I'm just going to make it so you can see everything over here. Once again. Pause if you have to. Sorry, I had that selected. That's, this is basically the whole script. That's the whole script for the client script. And now actually on to making these pets work. So... What you have to do is you make these models. Now, people get this mixed up. So, if you, guys, if your pet is only one block, then you do not need to do this. What you have to do is just make a model, call it pet or whatever your pet's name is, and then what you have to do is have your pet, the, there's the one main uh, part, or mesh, whatever it is, call it primary, okay? And then of the model, go into it and go to the properties and make the primary part of the model to primary, like I've done here. So since this is only one part, right, the pet is only one part, that's all it is, I called it primary, that one part, and then I selected the primary part and made it the primary. And now make sure um, it's looking the right direction. Which you can't really see it with like that, but if I change it real quick to something like this, and I put a decal on it, make sure it's looking the right direction, which I'm going to make that right now. I'm going to rotation on, and then ro rotate it. Alright, so if you guys have more than one part in your, more, more than one part in your model and whatnot, then say... Uh, there's a there's a part up here and it's like a little smaller a little bit bigger something like that right your pet is more than one part then what you would do is I'm just gonna change it to maybe like a hat or something right and what I would do is I wouldn't call this primary I would call this whatever I'd want like maybe hat or something right and then what I need to do is make sure it's facing the same direction as the primary which it is and then this is very crucial to making this work you need to put a weld constraint in, in the primary part, the one main base part. And in the weld constraint, we would set part 0 to be the primary part, and the part 1 to the hat. See? And now it works like that. You would need to do that for every part. So say, so say yeah, there's, there's this pet with only one ex extended part, then there's another. That's a little bit bigger. I would then make another weld constraint, and then and then have the part one go to the other part. That's the same thing for the flying. That's the same thing. Now, how would you actually make these pets work with the flying and whatnot? Well, in the pet model, there is a bool value called fly. Make sure it is capital F L Y. It is a boolean value, which is true or false. And basically, the properties in the fly boolean value 
if the pet is going to fly, then make it ch then check it. But for this regular pet, the flying, you know, it, it's it's not gonna fly. So uncheck it. And then make a number value inside that same model, a number value, not an int value, because number values let you have decimals and stuff. So it, the number value call it capital Y and then capital O offset. So capital Y and then offset with a capital O. And then I have it set to negative 1.75. It depends on the size of your pet. You're gonna have to play with that around a bit. But basically, here are my two pets. One's flying and one isn't. So see, in this flying pet, I go to the fly and the value is true, so it flies. And as you can see in my primary part, I have a wing, I called it, and then I have a weld constraint going to that wing. And so, it, so the base difference between a regular walking pet and a flying pet is that um, you just have to check uh, the fly boolean down here. And so I went over if you guys have multiple parts and whatnot. That's how all of that works. And now, if I go into the game and test this out, guys. There are no errors. And so... Then, in the workspace, I go to the player pets. There's my name, Stewie Fing. That's my uh, pet folder. And if I put this pet inside the pet folder and find my folder... Then, as you can see, it walks next to me, just like that. Now, as you can see, it's um, it's kind of, it's floating, and that might be because my pet is a little bit like small, so maybe I should make it bigger, or we could uh, change this value to something different. Or, whoops, change the value to something different so it's closer to the ground and it makes it look better now for the flying pet I put that in my folder and as you can see it flies along with me and there are no errors just like that now there's one thing I forgot to mention guys um, is I don't know if I've already mentioned it, but make sure all your parts if you have more than one part in your uh, Pet model make sure they are facing the same direction Okay, so So this is this is basically how you check to see if they're facing in both directions. So I put a decal and then Okay, it's facing that way. I don't think it really matters for the extra part, but for the primary part Make sure it's facing the right direction. Like that. And that is it for today's video, guys. If this did help you guys in any way, shape, or form, please, please leave a like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next Roblox Studio tutorial. Peace.